So uh, let's move on to the second part of this of the section today, that is the introduction to this new approach based on the catalog and based on the tools. Okay, so which is one of the which are the major challenges of GPU programming, in particular and in general of parallel programming for multi-core CPUs, for CMD vector execution, or for GPU programming. Okay, what is complex is to develop and maintain C, C++ code that can be executed in parallel and that runs free of bugs so that we can rely and trust the results that the code provides when running, for instance, on the Cori supercomputer. So doing this bug-free C, C++ Fortran parallel code development and maintenance is very complex and far more complicated than developing sequential code. There are multiple reasons for this. One of the reasons is that um, whenever you have a bug in your parallel code, it is very difficult and very time consuming to find and fix these bugs related to parallelism. And one of the main reasons is that uh, race conditions, uh, which is one of the main sources of parallel bugs, can appear in a production code running on Cori, but when you try in your laptop or in your development environment to reproduce the conditions that trigger and make this uh, bug and make it uh, appear so you can debug it and fix it, many times it's very difficult to reproduce that bug. So in general, the code can run correctly 99% of the times and fail just 1% and in production. So it's even more difficult to reproduce it in the development environment. And if this is complicated for multi-core CPUs, where you can uh, use powerful debuggers to uh, track the, the errors, this is even more difficult for graphical processing units, where there is no so advanced uh, tools to debug, find, and fix bugs of code running in parallel on the GPU, because the architecture of the GPU is completely different from the architecture of the CPU, and this makes much more complicated to debug, to develop powerful debuggers for that. So in general, uh, you are here probably because you have heard about the performance promised by GPUs, and you want to try to exploit that performance in your source codes. So if you want to do that, you need to have in mind two main challenges. Number one challenge, uh, and there is agreement in the community about this, is data movement. If you remember, multi-core CPUs run different threads and all the threads can access all the memory. So when you move to the GPU, you offload part of the computations to a different hardware chip, to a different uh, execution environment with its own processor and with its own memory. So in the end, you have two, at least two different memories that you need to manage from your code. So you need to move data from the memory of the host of the CPU to the memory of the GPU and move it in one direction and move it back to collect the results and continue the execution of the code on the CPU, multi-core CPU. So data movement is number one challenge in GPU programming. And the second one is data races. If you are running in parallel your code, you will see it uh, during these days. In the end, the data races appear both on the CPU and on the GPU. This is about how you split the computations, not moving data, how they you split the computations or the iterations of a loop so that each thread is responsible for executing different iterations of a loop in such a way that the result is correct and they do not uh, interfere with the execution and the correct results of a different thread. So this is called data races and it's essential to find data races and fix them to run the code correctly on the CPU and also on the GPU, okay? So remember these two main challenges that you need to address. Okay, so how can we help GPU programmers? Okay, if you think of uh, CMD vector program, programming, multi-threading programming, and GPU programming, probably GPU programming is the more, is the hardest uh, way of exploiting parallelism. 
and the more intrusive way, because usually you need to recode or refactor or re-engineer a, a very significant part of your code, if not essential data structures that have impact in hundreds of lines of code or functions across all the files of your application. So GPU programming is very hard and very trusted. So the main efforts that a GPU programmer needs to focus on is essentially detect and fix data races and data movement issues. Remember that you have two challenges. So you need to locate data movement and data races issues. Once you add parallelism, you need also to guarantee that the code that is already parallel runs correctly. This is the number two effort that is verifying that the code that you have written is already correct, okay? Number three, you have a sequential application or you have a parallel application with four parts of the code that have not been yet parallelized. So they are still executed in sequential mode or in single threaded mode. So in this case, you need to discover parts of the code that are still opportunities to add more parallelism to your application and potentially improve the performance. This is number three, discover the opportunities. And this is usually hard in real applications because you need to have a very comprehensive knowledge of your code, the data structures, how it is designed in classes or in files, and how the computations processes these data structures. So you need to do a lot of analysis in the code. So this is the number three uh, effort, discover. And finally, we have not yet talking about implementing. You will need every parallelization opportunity that you, use, that you discover. You will need to decide how to implement it in such a way that it is uh, it speeds up your application. So you will usually try different versions. You fine tune different versions until you find one that is correct. That can, you can verify that is correct. So these four steps are usually uh, repeated in a cyclic way in the different iterations of the software development lifecycle. So definitely we need new development tools to improve programmers productivity on the multi-core CPUs and especially if you want to use the GPUs. So we need help in finding and fixing parallel bugs and we also need help in preventing parallel bugs. The question is, can we write the code in such a manner that a parallel bug will not appear? Is this possible? Because if we can do that, we can save a lot of time and development effort just by learning to write the code in the appropriate manner, following best practices before adding parallel semantics in the code, before adding OpenMP or OpenACC directives to your code. And this is where this three states parallel programming best practice uh, process comes into play. This, again, this process has been developed and tested with uh, many teams across many HPC centers in Europe, US, and, and Asia. And essentially we have come up with a three-stage solution or process. Number one, prepare your code for parallelism. Again, think about an array of structs that you need to change and replace by a struct of arrays or independent arrays. This has a very deep impact in the code and how you write the code. So you need to analyze and modify the code in the preparation stage to save a lot of development effort and time when you need, when you address writing parallel code, okay? So stage number one is, the question is how can I write the code in such a manner that I prevent uh, parallel bugs from appearing when I add OpenMP and OpenACC practice. So once we finish stage number one, we go to stage number two. And what we want is to focus on discovering opportunities in the code to add more OpenMP and OpenAC practice, more parallelization opportunities, and then develop a first parallel version that runs correctly. In the stage two, it is not critical to focus on performance. You just need to understand your code, analyze the sequential semantics and how it can be run in parallel, and then develop your first version of parallel code that runs correctly. And that's the main objective of stage number two, not performance, correctness. Finally, you go to stage number three. And then here, you, yes, your, your, your goal is to improve performance as much as possible. But as you can see here, you can optimize your parallel code 
in many different ways. And these ways are not uh, uh, mutually exclusive. You can try to optimize at the same time data locality and load balancing or concurrency. So in stage number three, you will need to decide which is the best uh, optimization criteria for your application. So stage number three is usually uh, a time consuming stage as well, but it builds upon stage number two that provides a correct parallel code that usually many times slows down, goes slower, but it is correct. And it is a good starting point to build your parallel code, okay? So remember these three stages, prepare the code, create your first parallel version of the code, even if it slows down or it speeds up just a little. And finally, stage three, optimize your code, trying to reach your performance uh, goals. So in order to do this, uh, we propose the approach based on ensuring parallel programming best practices. And that recently received the Innovation Radar Prize in the European Union to an innovative approach that can have, has a lot of, can have a lot of impact in um, development of parallel code in many disciplines and in many across many markets. So two pillars are the basis of this approach. The catalog of the recommendations that we mentioned before, where you have here this, this, uh, this URL, you can click on it and you will see a listing of defects and recommendations that are available for you to learn and for you to check in your code. And with this catalog, what we need additional is tools to automate time-consuming tasks so that the tools can detect defects and recommendations automatically and suggest you the ways this can be fixed to improve the quality of your parallel code. And this is where Parallel Work Trainer and Parallel Work Analyzer tools come into play, okay? So let's take a fast look at uh, several um, examples uh, that fit into the three stages that we mentioned. So stage number one, remember, you don't want to insert parallelism yet in your code. You want to deeply understand your code and which are the main challenges to port that code and to enable parallelism in it, okay? Before starting to code in parallel. So here is an example of a parallel where recommendation, PWR002, declares scalar variables in the smallest scope possible. And here you can see a very simple example with a variable T declared at the function level at the beginning of a function. If you do it that way, whenever you parallelize the loop in line five, you will need to handle T because T is a variable that is declared outside the loop that you're going to parallelize. So, if you rewrite the code in such a way that you declare the variable at the beginning of the loop body, not at the beginning of the function body, then the C programming languages guarantees that every iteration we use a separate uh, storage for the variable T. So what this means is that when you add OpenMP pragmas in the third loop, you don't need to worry about T because each thread that you create will have its own copy of the variable T. So they will not interfere. It will be by default thread private without doing anything, without needing to care about the variable T when you write the pragmas and the clauses to do the data scope. Okay? So this is a good, simple, and representative example of how to write to prepare the code for parallelism. In the stage two, you want to create a parallel version of the code. So in this case, Imagine that you have discovered a loop that can be parallelized and you have implemented a parallel code with, for GPU with the OpenMP target teams distribute parallel for directing. So in this case, uh, PWD, parallel word defect number six, uh, finds missing deep copy of non-contiguous data to the GPU. A problem is that many times the parallel programming APIs, not only directive based, but also libraries, assume or need it's a requirement that the data that you want to transfer to a different memory needs to be contiguous in, in the memory. You need to guarantee that in your program. And in C, the double pointer in asterisk asterisk does not guarantee that the data will be contiguous in memory. So if you write a pragma, you will be writing buggy GPU 
code using OpenMP. So with the appropriate defect, you can detect that the way you declare the variable, the double pointer, is not correct. So you need to add additional semantics or additional hints to the compiler in the pragmas and in the clusters. In this case, you need to specify the whole range of rows and columns that will be used in the, in the GPU, that needs to be transferred, mapped to the GPU, okay? And here you have another example of what can be a recommendation. That is, in this case, it is best practice recommendation not to use the map clause to from, but to use the target enter data, target exit data, uh, directives to correctly map uh, pointer-based structures that suffer from this deep copy uh, problem. Okay, so all of this can be learned and is summarized whenever a tool detects the defect number six in your code. Okay, so this is a, a way to help you to detect bugs in your parallel code during stage number two. And finally, in stage number three, this is now about optimizing for performance. So a very typical example, again, uh, we have written this in collaboration with uh, NERSC uh, staff because they are working with the OpenMP and OpenACC standards to promote these practices and to collect the needs of the users and translate it, this into features that can be used in the standards. So this is a very important part of the work that this, this staff is doing. So what happens in this case is that whenever you go to the GPU, you want to provide the, compile, the GPU compiler, you have different choices. Cray compiler, LLVM compiler, GCC compiler, NVIDIA compiler, different compilers that can map your OpenMP code to different types of accelerators or different types of GPUs provided by different vendors. So it is best practice to specify the program in such a way that you can delegate in the compiler the responsibility of creating the threads and mapping the threads to the underlying GPU architecture in the, the way that will provide you better performance or provide better performance for your code, okay? So how can you do this? Instead of using the typical Pragma Parallel 4 that you use on the CPU side, you need to write Teams Distribute Parallel 4. You need to replace Parallel 4 by Teams Distribute Parallel 4. And these additional hints provide the GPU compiler with information it needs to do the work properly in the thread creation and mapping to the different GPU threads. Okay, so these are, are just three examples of defects and recommendations that fit into these three stages of the process of the methodology. So if you click on the Knowledge uh, Checks website, this catalog is and will always be open because it's community knowledge you will find this listing of eight defects and 16 recommendations. In the last two months, we have added 10 new defects and recommendations. So this catalog will continue to grow in, in, during the upcoming months as we capture feedback from users, feedback from staff, next staff, and we translate this into um, defects and recommendations for the catalog supported by the tool, okay? And that's it, this is for you to understand how this approach works. Remember, two pillars, the open catalog plus the tools to automate checking the compliance of the source code of your application with the best practice recommendations of this catalog. And we need, if you're interested in collaborating in creating and improving this uh, catalog with new defense recommendations, this is really uh, something you can do by contacting us. We are very happy to collaborate with a wider community of people in the SPC to continue collecting this, this information and writing it as open catalog of defense and recommendations. Regarding the question from Mengiao Wang about uh, MPI code, uh, yes, there is no limitation in using parallel work tools with MPI code. What parallel work tools will do is will try to find parts of the code that are executed sequentially within an MPI rank and will suggest you opportunities for parallelization using uh, OpenMP or OpenACC. So in principle, there is no technical limitation for doing so. So once you decide to try the MPI code, just let us know if you find any issues regarding the flags or how to compile or analyze the code. Um, 
The other question about uh, STD vector and STD array in, in C++. Okay, the tool supports C++. C++ essentially, at this moment, in this version, you uh, cannot use yet STD vector and STD array. You need to use plain arrays and the regular bracket syntax. This is something that definitely we are working on to, to open the door to analyze these important C++ uh, features. Okay, another question about the smallest scope possible. Uh, we show an example with the scalars and the question is about arrays. This is definitely a very good question. Uh, we are working on that. This is one of the open uh, development lines for the next version of Parallel World. And here uh, it is a bit harder to extend it for arrays because if you uh, move the declaration of an array that is large inside a loop and you enclose it typically inside a parallel region with many threads, your code, your parallel code might run out of memory because each thread is creating a private copy of a large array. So whenever we talk about the smallest scope possible for arrays, you, we, you will see in the upcoming defects and recommendations in the future that we will need to uh, take into consideration also the size of the arrays and if the arrays are statically allocated or are dynamically allocated uh, in the program. So it is not as simple as a straightforward as the scalar case. It needs, it has more situations that you need to consider. Uh, 